Okay, for this presentation, I'm just going to try and answer this question. Who is this Jesus person anyway? His name, Jesus Christ, is um, probably the single most well-known name throughout the entire world. So, we'll start with the academic viewpoint. We know that uh, Jesus was born around 3 BC in Bethlehem in Judea. His parents were Mary, his mother, and Joseph was his fo foster father. His siblings were James, Jose, Judas, Simon, and he had some si unnamed sisters. His residence was in Nazareth, although he was born in Bethlehem. His occupation was a carpenter. His ethnicity was Jewish, the Israeli tribe of Judah. His religion was Judaism. He was baptized by John the Baptist at the start of his ministry at age 30. His ministry roles included an itinerant preacher that he went, went all throughout the area of Judea and Galilee making announcements of the kingdom of God. He was a rabbi, teacher. He was a healer, a miracle worker, a philosopher, and a social reformer, and a messianic leader. He's also the founder of the Christian church. He lived probably most of his life in Nazareth. He traveled throughout the regions of Galilee and Judea. He was sentenced to death by crucifixion on charges of sedition against the Roman government. His body cannot be accounted for, and thus uh, his believers believed that he was raised from the dead. However, something just does not add up. With facts mentioned above, the name Jesus Christ it should have faded into obscurity. But instead, Jesus has become one of the most significant of all people in human history. How did this happen? Because this really doesn't make sense nearly 2,000 years later. So let's consider. <clears throat> the farthest Jesus traveled in his adult life was about 100 miles. <clears throat> so from Nazareth to Jerusalem, roughly. Yet his name is known worldwide, all throughout the world. There are no documents handwritten by Jesus himself, and yet his followers produced 5,800 Greek, 10,000 Latin, and 9,300 other manuscripts dated from 125 AD all the way through the 10th century. So you had all these manuscripts and manuscript fragments. Jesus died unmarried, leaving no offspring, yet he has an estimated 2 billion followers today, which would be roughly a third of the world's population. His body is only one of many that wound up missing, <clears throat> yet many believe he was resurrected from the dead and still lives today. Jesus was rejected and considered a fraud by the leading authorities of Judaism in his day. Yet throughout history, and even today, many have chosen to die rather than to reject him. Such as those who were killed in the Roman Colosseum. Jesus was only one of many who suffered crucifixion. But yet, he is the one most commonly associated with the cross. So whenever we look at a cross, we think of Jesus. His life on earth ended nearly 2,000 years ago, yet his memory lives on through today. The Christian movement was regarded as heretical by the leaders of Judaism and subsequently faced intense opposition it should have fizzled out long ago. Yet today, Christian church buildings exist throughout the whole world. 
So throughout the world, there are Christian church buildings. The method of just simply announcing the gospel of salvation through Jesus is a ridiculous method. Yet many have believed and were changed through this foolish method. So the conclusion is, the influence of Jesus Christ upon the world is of supernatural cause. It is nothing short of a miracle, the spread of Jesus Christ and what is known about him. So back to the question, who is this Jesus person anyway? So we we'll go with from the scriptural, the scriptural viewpoint from the Bible. <clears throat> so going to all these fragments that were compiled in our modern day Bibles that we have today. <clears throat> so in the Gospel of John, verse 1, it says, In the beginning always was the Word, and the Word always was with God, and the Word always was God. <clears throat> the same always was in the beginning with God. All things were created by him. All things were made. And apart from him was not anything made that was made. In him, that is, the word was life. And the life was the light of men. So Jesus, the Word, he is the light, and he is the life. <clears throat> the nature of God. Apostle John reveals in his first letter to the churches that God is love. But more specifically, God is agape love. Summed up, God is agape love. That is, <clears throat> the nature of agape is giving of yourself for someone else's benefit, even when it's to your own hurt. That is the kind of person that God is. <clears throat> Continuing on in the Gospel of John, and the Word was made flesh. The Gospel of Luke record, records this, the angel said unto her, that's Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. There also, that Holy One, who is Jesus, who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. So Jesus Christ is the Word. <clears throat> Jesus is also known as the Son of David. Matthew chapter 1 lists the genealogy of Jesus <clears throat> going from David through Judah, Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. Also Luke chapter 3 also lists the genealogy of David through Judah, Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. However, one account shows it through Joseph and the other shows his lineage through Mary. Then going all the way back to Noah, and to Adam, of course, Adam being called the Son of God. Jesus is also known as the Lamb of God. The Gospel of John records that John the Baptist said of Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Another viewpoint is Jesus is our High Priest. He's our go-between. He is... He represents us to God as men, and he represents God to us. In Hebrews, it record, records that Jesus is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. 
for such a high priest was fitting for us. He's also known as the King of Kings. <clears throat> Yet, the Gospel of John records this, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going to God, what did he do? He rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. So the king of kings is the one who serves his own. He's the servant to his own. It's also known as the last Adam. Paul records to the church in Corinth, the first man was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. That's an enlivening spirit, That one that enlivens, gives life. Isaiah chapter 9 records, the prophet Isaiah records, He's known as Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. These are all titles that we know Jesus Christ by. Also in Daniel chapter 9, he's known as the Messiah. <coughs> and using this pictograph representation of the Hebrew alphabet. We look at the Hebrew word Messiah, which is spelled out as under Mem, Shin, Yad, and Chet. So Mem represents mighty blood or water. Shin is to consume or destroy. Yad is the works <clears throat> works of your hand or arm, and Chet is a tent or wall of separation. So this Messiah, through his mighty blood and water, destroyed the sinful works of our hand, hands and the tent wall or separation that existed between God and us. <clears throat> In Exodus 6, he's known as Jehovah, or Yahweh. And going back to the pictograph, you have Yahweh spelled out with this, like this. That is, the arm and hand, behold, the nail, behold. It's Yad, Hey, Vav, Hey. Which basically means, behold, the nail. So I just want to interrupt for a second that in the book of Revelation, the Apostle John records that the angel told him, the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. It's like the wind. It's a spirit. It's the wind. It's the whole source, the whole reason for prophecy. It is not the testimony of mankind. It's not the testimony of the earth. It's not the testimony of creation. It's not foretelling the future. Testimony of Jesus Christ is the whole spirit, the whole reason, the whole source of prophecy. So back to the scriptural viewpoint. In the original Hebrew, <clears throat> in the book of Genesis, there's this untranslated portion of Aleph Tav. That's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. They correspond to Alpha and Omega, which is the first letter of the Greek, and the last letter of the Greek. In Revelation, John the Apostle records that Jesus himself said, our risen Lord and Savior Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. And also reiterating, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Back to our pictograph representation. Representation, Aleph, 
means God, ox, strength, or leader. And Tav means covenant, mark, or sign, looking like a cross. So we have Alpha corresponding to Aleph, corresponding to the pictograph version, and also Omega corresponding to Tav, corresponding to that pictograph symbol of the Tav, which is the cross. And what do we have? God on the cross. Isaiah 44, prophet Isaiah records that God said, I'm the first and I'm the last, and besides me, there is no God. So we have basically the leader strength, the ox, God on the cross. The ox was a work, an animal that it was used as like a workhorse. <clears throat> also another interesting thing. In the beginning, <clears throat> in the beginning is spelled out as, as Bet, Resh, Aleph, Shin, Yad, and Tav. So Bet is a house or tent. Resh is the first or highest person, the man's head of that house. Aleph is, again, strength or God, an ox head. Shin is to consume or destroy, shown by teeth. Yad is a hand or, or works. And Tav is the, gov the covenant mark, the cross. Putting them together, we have the Son of God destroyed the evil works of our hands at the cross. Moving right along, in the scriptures we have types and shadows of Jesus Christ, testimonies of him before he came to earth, born of the Virgin Mary. <clears throat> Genesis records, <clears throat> And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This is a type and shadow of the death of Jesus Christ and his burial. With the Spirit of God moving upon the face of the waters, taking part in his resurrection. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. This corresponds, of course, to Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And a sign of this, a type and shadow of this, was when he was baptized, and the Holy Spirit came down upon him in the form like a dove. And then it was declared a voice out of heaven saying, that's the Father's voice saying to him, You are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. Or in other ways, you are my agape Son, in you I am well pleased. <clears throat> Another type and shadow of Jesus is what's recorded in Genesis where God said cursed is the ground for your sake that is for Adam's sake and also in Galatians Paul wrote cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree so here it shows Jesus becoming the curse for us on our sake for our on our behalf and another type and shadow is when Abraham being directed by God, offers up his son Isaac. This is a type of shadow of the true offering of God offering up his own son, Jesus Christ, as the offering for us. Another type and shadow is the account of when Moses was in Egypt and all the plagues were performed against the Egyptians to, to um, basically provoke Pharaoh to, into letting the Israelites go. Well, you have the death of the Egyptian firstborn and the blood of the Passover lamb. What does this show? <clears throat> the death of the firstborn of God, who, who 
was given as the Passover lamb by which eternal death passed over all of us who believe in him. And also remember, it's recorded that in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew ties this prophecy to Jesus where it said, Out of Egypt I have called my firstborn. So, who is this Jesus in person anyway? He is the beloved, the agape, God the Son, full of grace and truth, who preferred to take hell upon himself at the cross instead of allowing us to end up in hell due to our sins and with no escape in the way of getting out. So I would like to conclude with this, which is an introduction to another presentation entitled The Cross of Christ, The Heart of the Matter. And I would like to leave you with this from the prophet Isaiah. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. <laughs>